all right hello so this uh this video lecture is going to be over the bond types notes okay right? um again uh, i know most of you were in class when we went over these so uh, i'm just going to do a quick lecture with this and um you know, I might leave out a little stuff, bit of stuff that we did in class with it, but I'll try to be as complete as possible. So, um, this one is going to be pretty short. It's it's just the listing of the two different bond types, ionic and covalent, and um, just kind of a comparison of them. So, uh, ionic are bonds that are formed when atoms gain or lose electrons in order to become stable, whereas the covalent ones are bonds that are formed when atoms share electrons in order to become stable. So the remember, an atom that gains or loses electrons is called an ion, which is why bonds formed when atoms gain or lose electrons are called ionic bonds because they're made with ions. All right. So if you think about it in terms of um, one of the atoms is going to want to give up electrons and one of the atoms is going to want to take electrons to become stable. So you're going to get one that is a positive charge, which is the cation, and one that is a negative charge, which is the anion. You have to have one of each. Now in a covalent bond, these are bonds formed between two or more nonmetals, which typically means because your nonmetals are um, a lot of them, like the nonmetals are over here on the periodic table on the right side, which means most of them have high number of valence electrons. So most of them are going to want to gain electrons. So what happens is if you get two nonmetals that both want to gain electrons, then neither one of them wants to give any up to become stable. They both want to gain. So what they end up doing is they end up sharing. Um, each atom ends up sharing some of its valence electrons. And then when they share them, they both get to count them in their outer level. So by sharing, they can, they can increase the number that each of them gets to count in their outer level until they're stable. Okay. So uh, properties... Ionic bonds are brittle as solids. Okay. This means that they um, kind of break easily. And let me see if I can pull up here real quickly. Okay, so table salt or sodium chloride is an ionic substance, an ionically bonded substance. Um, we're used to seeing table salt like in its kind of like powdered form, right? Like what we'd use to put on food or whatever. But it can also, um, if you've got it in solid, like it, they, it'll, it'll form crystals, like in large chunks of solids like this. Okay, so if it's like this, though, it's brittle and it can break easily. It can, it can break or shatter if you were to, you know, hammer it or hit it or something like that. Whereas covalent, um, covalently bonded substances are more malleable as solids. Malleable technically means the ability to be um, hit or hammered without shattering. So like some of your softer metals like, like gold and silver and stuff, um, if you want to sort of a good mental image of what malleable would be like. Think about silly putty. Okay, silly putty, like you can you can stretch it, hit it, or whatever. It doesn't it doesn't break or crack or shatter. It's it's like kind of like pliable and like that. That would be malleable. Okay. Um, ionic, easily soluble, that means they dissolve in water. So salt, again salt dissolves in water, right? Covalent are only somewhat soluble. Uh, that means that 
they like some of them will dissolve in water not as easily as ionic okay now ionic will dissociate in water which means ionize or break up into ions okay so if you put i'm looking to see if i still have the image here uh, oh, actually i think i erased it yeah okay well, i'll just make it again so if you put uh, ionic So NaCl, so this is, oh, that kind of blurry. If you put, um, if you put sodium chloride, NaCl in water, it dissolves, right? We know that. But what actually happens when you do this is When the sodium chloride goes into the water, it splits sort of into its ions. This is called dissociation. Okay. Which is different than dissolve. Well, it's dissolving is more generic dissociation is is a little more specific okay whereas covalent on the other hand like sugar okay that's table sugar if you put table sugar into a Sorry. You put table sugar into water. Okay, it dissolves, but what happens is it doesn't ionize or dissociate. It actually stays together as a molecule. Does not dissociate um so the analogy i use in class for these is uh so the sodium chloride ionic stuff is kind of like if you go to a party with a friend and so you go to the party um you go together you like drive together whatever you go in the same vehicle you get to the party you walk around you and the friend won't um like, yeah, sometimes you'll be hanging out together and talking to other people, but you're going to mingle with other people and you're not always going to be with that friend like the whole entire night at the party. Like you're going to mingle with other people. So when people like, every, you know, sometimes you'll talk to your friends, sometimes you'll be around them, sometimes you won't. Okay. But at the end of the party, you're going to leave with that friend because you guys came together in the same vehicle. Okay. So you're going to, you know, leave then the party again in the same vehicle. This is like ionic um, substances in water. When they go into the solution, so they come together, right? The party is like the, the, the water. When they enter into the solution, they sort of split up a little bit, but they're still kind of together. Like they hang out and they see each other, whatever, they're kind of there, but like they, they mingle and they kind of split up a little. But if you were to, if they were to leave the party, quote unquote, which is the solution, they leave, like, so if you were to boil off the water, the salt would still be together. Like it's not a chemical change. Okay. Now, sugar, covalently bonded substances. These are like, same analogy, but it's like a couple that goes to the party together. And it's like the couple that never leaves each other's side, right? Like, so they come together, 
they go around the party together like they don't really split up wherever one is the other one's right there they're never apart for more than a, you know 30 seconds to a minute or whatever they're basically attached at the hip as they go around so at the party they mingle with other people and talk but they stay together and then obviously when they leave they leave together as well well that's like sugar okay when sugar goes to the party quote unquote the solution when it goes in it stays as sugar the reason it dissolves is because water survive water surrounds the individual sugar molecules and kind of separates that um separates one sugar molecule from another but the molecule itself the atoms in the molecule stay together okay so that's the difference between ionic and covalent dissociation and does not dissociate all right um other properties ionic are um as a liquid or in solution they're good conductors of electricity covalent not good conductors of electricity um, ionic have high melting points covalent have low melting points ionic are labeled as formula units covalent are labeled as molecules uh we're typically we typically use the word molecule to mean any kind of like small compound or whatever but technically there is a difference between the covalent and ionic um so if you were to look at covalent um so so if we were to look at a at water molecules for covalent we would see um we would have something like this Okay, H2O, right, water molecule. Um, and if you had a whole bunch of water molecules um, all, like, put together, right, stacked together, you would know where one, like, you would know where one mo uh, water molecule starts and ends and where the next one starts and ends. So, in other words, like, if I'm stacking these together, we know that this is one water molecule and this is another, right? So, the reason that we don't call, um, the reason that we don't call ionic ones uh, molecules has to do with what I'm going to show you here in a second. Okay. Uh, it has to do with this. So, oh, hold on. Let me get back to it. Okay. This is uh, table salt, NaCl, and its structure um, when it's like with a bunch of sodium chloride formula units together. So, if you look, like, where is the NaCl molecule. Well, it could be any of this. It could be this right here. It could be this right here. It could be that. It could be this. Like, you can't just look at this and say, oh, there is the NaCl molecule because of how it's joined together and stuff like that. It just makes this whole matrix of, of all of it kind of. So that's the reason that they don't use the label molecules for ionic substances. They use something different called a, a formula unit um versus the covalently bonded substances which you can actually distinctly see where the molecule would you know this is one molecule this is another okay so that's the reason behind uh the different labeling for the two different types of, of bonds okay and finally uh ionic formula is written as the empirical formula the lowest whole number ratio of atoms in a compound um you always make it the low so like nacl of sodium chloride is is like nacl um covalent is written as a molecular formula it shows both the types and the numbers of atoms making up the molecule so like it would be the total like 
C6H12O6, not reduced. That would be, that's the molecular formula which they use for covalent bonds. Okay. All right. That's it for this. If you have questions at any point, let me know. I will talk to you guys later.